Well, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning, and I have, I'm glad to have the opportunity to uh, try to read some scripture to the church, and I've I, uh, been trying to pray about the, the service, and uh, I just I just want to tell the church this morning that I want to be an encouragement. Uh, that. I, I, that's that's my that's my main point is to be an encouragement. And if I uh, can do these things, and uh, uh, then I've been a, I've been a blessing and I've been a success. So, if you would this morning turn your Bibles to chapter 16 of John, chapter 16 of John. <laughs> These things, in verse 1 of chapter 16, These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, the time cometh, that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Mm -hmm. These th and these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. Now, we want to stop reading right there, and we want to turn this morning to uh, John 9, verse 1, in this, because these things have I spoken in our lesson unto you, that you should not be offended. Look at, at chapter 9, and verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now we're talking about this uh, being an, an offense or a hindrance. And so, and uh, Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the work of God should be made manifest in him. Amen. So this morning we see this and, and hear what Jesus has to say concerning this. And every time that we see a car wreck or we see someone die or we see uh, someone get in trouble in some way, it's not, it's not really because that uh, uh, they, are, they are not uh, uh, in the presence or we're serving the Lord. Because if it were, we'd be all in the same boat. But mm -hmm. listen, the thing that the thing that he's trying to tell these people is this morning is, and we should really understand it. <clears throat> he says this: neither the man has sinned nor his parents. So there's nobody guilty of his blindness. But here's the thing: mm -hmm. I must. He said. He said, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. And so a lot of these things that we see going on in our world this day and time, uh, we shiver and shake and worry about these things, but so many times God does this, lets this happen to get our attention, to show his power and to uh, encourage his children. And, you know, this morning we can get down and get sick or we can do this or we do that. And we get down and out. But the thing of it is, when God comes along and makes us, gets us well and all, it's such a wonderful blessing. Amen. We know this morning that all blessings come from God. And so this is, this is why I wanted to read this to you. Now, he says here in verse uh, 4, I must work the work of him that sent me mm -hmm. while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. And this work that he's doing is the things that God told him to do and the things that will fulfill his being here on earth. These are the things that he's talking about doing. And so he said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Mm -hmm. So we need this morning to remember that 
Jesus is going back to heaven, but listen, what has he done? He's left the Holy Spirit here. Mm -hmm. And listen, that light shines just as bright now as it did when Jesus was walking with the apostles. So Amen. This morning, we need to be comforted in this, knowing that uh, the Holy Spirit, and I can't, I, can't, I can't exalt him enough, but the Holy Spirit is with us, in us, and about us, and he... He lets us, his beings be known, Amen. and he, he keeps us uh, out of a lot of trouble that we uh, would, might get into by warning us of the, the things that are going on around us. Because, listen, the devil, he is always, always, he's always on the job. Right. And listen, he uh, <clears throat> may be sitting back and, and laughing and carrying on and letting his little imps come down here. But he's in charge, mm -hmm. and listen, he wants he wants you and me to get into trouble, mm -hmm. or that he can point his finger at us and say, "God, so there's one of your children." And so this morning, think on these things when when the devil comes to you and says, "Why don't you do this?" or "Why don't you do that?" The thing of it is, you need to consider the thing and take your time at doing it. Because listen, a lot of times he's trying to get you in a trick bag. Right. So here he says here, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Now, <clears throat> this... This, uh, I'm on, I will read a little bit more just for a minute, but this thing that, that he told the blind man to do, if someone comes up to you and, and tells you, uh, you say, well, I'm sick, I, 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 well, you go out there and lean up against a tree and, and spit on it. Listen, I mean, it's about, and, and I'm not trying to be foolish about this thing, but listen, he told him, he says, here, you go down there, and you uh, uh, wash in this pool, and of course, let me rub this on you. And so, but now here's the thing of it: God is always right. And here's the thing that that I see in this: it's all in faith. Mm -hmm. The thing that when he uh, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Now there wasn't nothing there, and when he sent him down to the pool to wash off, there's nothing in the water that will, will take care of his blindness. And so he says, and, and go wash in the pool of Siloam, and it is by the interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came see. Amen. And so people this day and time will use, even use this washing as baptism. Mm. Uh, I mean, they'll, they'll squeeze out anything out of water to, to get you to think that you need to be baptized in order to be saved. But listen, people, he's just using that as an example Amen. for that he could uh, get something else across to us this morning that we know we know what I'm telling you is right. And the thing that, that is so important about it is that we don't get, let the devil mislead us with it because uh, it's, it's very simple that his faith, his faith is what did the healing. And so he says, uh, and uh, I wanted to read uh, uh, something else, but I'll, I'll get to it later. But now notice uh, here in verse 8, the neighbors therefore and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, is not this he that sat and begged? Now the, the people uh, that seen him sitting, uh, most of the time they sat in the temple, and you remember when Peter come by, he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And here this man, this beggar sat, and that's the only place that they could expect anything from anybody. Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. Amen. Now, this is the blind man after he's been healed, and he's, he's telling them this. Therefore said they unto him, 
how were thy eyes open? And this morning, it's a great question. It's a great question to a Christian. It's a great question to a lost person. You ask a Christian, how was your eyes open? He knows what he, or she knows what happened to her. They have the, the remembrance of it. They can go back to that time and, and realize and tell you about their eyes being open and they understood their lost condition and they called upon the name of the Lord. And the ones that, uh, that can't, uh, they're lost and, and they need to be were, uh, talked to and talk. So he said here, uh, uh, others said he is like it. Now, how do we get back to the lesson? Therefore, they said unto him, how were thine eyes open? And I want to, I want to express this thing this morning about the lost person. You, you see a lost person and you ask him, how was your eyes open? And they don't know what you're talking about. Uh, they may they may have been church uh, goers all their life, and they might know about what you're talking about, but they've never experienced that experience of having their eyes open. And so they, the, the, those that those that that were asked that that had it happen, they could tell. You. Mm -hmm. And if there's one here this morning uh, that cannot remember. The day of their salvation, or the time that their eyes were open, and the, and and the Holy Spirit spoke to them, then they need comforting first, Amen. and then they need God's word uh, revealed to them in a greater way, or they need the Holy Spirit to deal with their hearts, because that's that's the way it happens. So now, in this, he in verse eleven, then he answered and said, "A man that." is called Jesus, made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Now this was just pure, pure faith. And now mm -hmm. I've got a scripture over here I want to read to you if I can get to it real quick. First John, over in First John. Just bear with me and I'll, I'll eventually find it. Well, I need to read it to you. First John 5. I believe it is First John 5. Let me make sure that I read you the right scripture because I don't First John 5, 4. First John 5 and verse 4. And notice what he says here. 4. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Amen. And this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Mm -hmm. And so this man received Jesus' word, had faith, went down to the swamp uh, where the water was, washed his face, and come back seeing. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, it, it's, it's that simple. But yet, people people are afraid of it. Mm -hmm. People are afraid uh, when someone tries to tell them about uh, their salvation, their experience. They're still afraid because they they the Holy Spirit is the only one that can really deal with their heart. Amen. He's he's the one that's got the key to it, and he tells them, and they believe. So this is why this is why he 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 was. Uh, uh, he was our faith. In verse 5, I'll read this. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Amen. And so there's nothing else that I, we, a person can tell anybody about uh, uh, how they can be saved, but that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. And the Holy Spirit must deal with it. Okay, so now let me get back to our lesson again. He there said, therefore, in verse 10, therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes open? And he answered and said, A man that's called Jesus made the prayer of my eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Who, Where is he? He said, I know not. 
And you know, it was good. It was a good answer mm -hmm. because you remember, you remember the day or night or whenever that you were saved, uh, and someone would, you know, you know something had happened. You knew in your heart and soul that something had happened. If they come questioning you about these things, uh, what could you have told them? Uh, you couldn't have told them a whole lot who it was or, uh, uh, at that time and all that. But here he says here, uh, I don't know who it was, and but he said here, uh, then said they unto him, where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind, and it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. And we'll see here that they persecuted Jesus mm -hmm. for doing this on the Sabbath day. And he had it round and round and round with them. And one of the things I remember about uh, that Sabbath day, he said, Jesus said unto them, if you had a, a ox that fell into the into the, a hole or, or something, would you not? Help it out mm -hmm. if it was on the Sabbath. And right. they couldn't answer it because, listen, that's that's how you have to put it. Because these things that are that were are happening to this man, uh, they wanted to find something wrong with him because we'll see it uh, in this that they even went and got their his parents and said, "Is this your son?" Now they said. We know that he's our son and that he was born blind. But who did this for him, we don't know. Because their problem was, and it was a big thing, they would be thrown out of the temple. Right. They wouldn't get to go into the temple and worship. So this is why this is why he said uh, here, and they, uh, they said unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that he is that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, he is a prophet. In verse 18, but the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they verified that he was blind mm -hmm. and they could look at him and see he served us, that he had received his sight. And so there was no more that they could argue about. But who did it and how he did it that's what they that's what they held in their heart and they kept on and they kept on and they kept on and they crucified the son of god mm -hmm. so now back to our lesson again this morning i want to read just a little bit more before i get through here and uh here as i was telling you about the blind man's parents look at verse 2 of the lesson uh, verse uh, chapter 16 verse 2 they shall put you out of the synagogues. Mm -hmm. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Right. And that this morning, when when Jesus was uh, going uh, uh, carrying that ladder up the hill on Golgotha, they were just as sure that he was a, a, a unbeliever. He, they were sure that they were justified in killing him, and because. Jesus said uh, before he died, they know not what they do. Right. And so this morning, uh, there's so many people out there that are, uh, are, are against God's people. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, don't, they, they see all their old pretenders and they this and that and this and that. But listen, they don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They don't know, and, and they, they, they won't never know if, a, if their eyes are not uh, open. And so they have a, they have a, a, a terrible time. But I want to read one more thing. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father. Now, I want you to read, uh, and, and Brother Larry uh, taught on this the other day in the book of Acts. He talked about Stephen, but I want you to just see just a little bit this morning in Acts 7 uh, for Stephen's defense and all and, and he started with Abraham and went down through Moses and all the, all the ones up there and then on, on over there uh, in verse 54 when they heard these things they were cut to the heart and this is what Stephen's had told them 
And listen, they said when they looked upon him, it was just like looking upon an angel. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it, it should have been that something would have happened to him, but it didn't because God had designated Jesus Christ to go to the cross and be crucified on a certain day. Amen. And so they, but anyway, when they heard in verse 54, heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I, I looked this, studied this a little bit about this gnashing. And they had a, they had a way of, uh, of popping their teeth uh, and and letting it, if, if a whole group of them got together, they'd pop their teeth and not let them know. And, and, but uh, I was, well, a lot of times I thought they were biting him, but they weren't. They were just popping their teeth at him. And that was one of the ways that they had of probably cussing him or cursing him or whatever. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But he says in verse 55, But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Amen. And said, Behold, I see heaven open, and the Son of Man standeth on the right hand of God. Mm -hmm. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witness laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul, and they, they stoned Stephen's calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this on, on the sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Amen. And this morning, this morning, the, the falling asleep was that uh, he was dead, but mm -hmm. we, when uh, the writer used this falling asleep, I think that uh, it was more or less, it wasn't a painful death as it could be called. Amen. The way that the way that he used these words, he fell asleep, and so you know how easy it is sometimes for you to fall asleep, and you don't. I mean, it don't take five minutes or 10, ten seconds to fall asleep, and and it's, you're asleep. And so Stevens, Stevens was was dead for telling these people mm -hmm. the things that, that they had done wrong. And, and, and he gave them a good speech, people. He, he did. He went from Abraham all the way through mm -hmm. and how that they had persecuted the church, how that they had done these things wrong. And when, uh, when, they, uh, when they got through with listening to him, they killed him. Mm -hmm. And so this is, this is a, a little bit of uh, some of the things that I try to study a little bit on and read to you. And I hope, I hope that, that uh, some of this is, has been something that you can think on. Mm -hmm. Something that, if there be one here that's not saved, can get me stirred a little bit and listen to the Holy Spirit when it speaks to them and, and say, uh, you know, that's what you need. That's what you need. Because I, I hate to see anyone lost, mm -hmm. but I hate to see anyone blind too. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, pray for one another. Uh, we, well, we're small in number, but hey, that's where God works, mm -hmm. you know, small bunches sometimes. And so just remember, uh, when you pray, pray for one another earnestly, and uh, uh, you'll see you'll see some things happening if you'll just continue to pray. So I thank you this morning for listening to me. Read the word. Amen. Amen.